Hey y'all. Um, I just thought it'd be interesting to make a video of my church history. So from the age of zero to six, me and my parents, my parents and I, <laughs> went to a, um, I guess it was kind of Pentecostal. It actually was a cult church because it was called the local church and they believed that they should be the only church in every city. Like they went to the local church of Santa Ana, California, and they literally thought that they should be the only church in Santa Ana. They didn't believe in denominations, so it's basically non-denominational. It was kind of a cult church in the sense that um, they literally encouraged their members to not speak to their families, their biological families, which is kind of crazy because yeah, what if you're like, what if your biological family is Christian? Then you should. But they wanted to be the people's family instead of their biological family. So that's when you know that something's a cult. But, I mean, in some cases that can be good if your family is, like, satanic or something. But not if they're actually Christian, which both my mom and dad's families were Christian. So that was crazy. Anyways, so anyways, that's probably why then when I was six, my dad molested me. He went to jail. Then my mom and brother and I started going to a non-denominational, more like casual church where they had like rock music for worship. I remember I was really happy there. And then my parents got back together stupidly. I've always thought that was a bad decision on my mom's part, but whatever. Then we moved to Nebraska and we were going to a Baptist church. It was called Country Bible, Country Bible Baptist Church in Blair, Nebraska, population 7,000 in that town. I went to that church for five years, went to Awana's there. That's where I memorized most of the Bible verses that I memorized, actually. So that's from fourth grade to eighth grade. Country Bible Church. <laughs> then we moved to California because my mom's mom was still in California. Um, I went to Main Place Christian. It was non-denominational. I guess it was Baptist. It was right next to my high school. Went to that church, got baptized there, went there for two years. I was extremely involved in the youth group. We went on missions trips. We went to India, Mexico. Um, had a lot of fun. Those were probably the two happiest years of my life, honestly. I keep thinking, man, I keep thinking, if I could go back in time, when was I the most happiest? It probably was when I was at that church. So that was my freshman, sophomore year of high school. Then I had a boyfriend. He convinced me to get high. My youth pastor got really mad at me. She even said that maybe I wasn't Christian because I did that, which is so stupid. So we decided to leave that church, which is really sad. But then we went to Mariner's church in Irvine, California. They actually, in their statement of faith, they called themselves a, they called themselves a spirit-filled church. So I guess it was kind of Pentecostal, but more just non-denominational. So I went to that church from age, I guess, basically 16 to 25. And that church was awesome. I just loved everybody so much. The pastors were so cool. I had a gigantic crush on my youth pastor. His name was Jeff McGuire. <laughs> oh, and I had a crush on our worship leader, Tim O'Nan. He was 10 years older than me, though. But I wish I would have married him. I guess, yeah, so when I was 17, he was 27. So it would have been illegal. Too bad. Anyways, um, yeah, so I went to that church from 25. Then I moved to Nebraska to live with my brother but I didn't live for him very long because I didn't live with my brother very long because he had a dog and I really really don't like dogs so I got my first serious boyfriend Roger he was raised in church he was raised in a non-denominational non church so that was good um, we went to church a little bit like here and there not a whole lot um, I think we both felt weird because we were just living together for two years. We didn't get married because he was still married to his crazy ex-wife who wouldn't divorce him. So I think we felt weird about that. So maybe for that reason, we didn't go to church necessarily every Sunday. Then he died from drinking and being on like five different medications. Watch out for that. 
don't be on more than one medication and don't drink while you're on medication. Um, then I started writing a blog. I felt like God said, tell his story. So I started writing a blog. That kind of became my church, actually, from that point forward. Because then instead of being preached at, I started preaching through my writing. Starting when I was 28, so that was about 11 years ago. I'm now 39. So, yeah, so basically for 11 years, my blog has been my church. And I've been my own pastor. And I guess I consider myself an online pastor. And I guess my blog was getting read, I think, by like 250 people a day. So you could say that I had an online church with 250 members. Yay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyways, but I did go to various churches. Gosh, when was... Okay, then I met my ex-husband six months after Roger died. We were going to... We went to like a Baptist church a little bit. We honestly didn't go very much to church because he was always working on Sundays but I had my blog so that was like my church and then um, and then finally when we had both of our daughters we started going to this Pentecostal church ironically that is kind of the church that broke us up because we got in a fight I told him that some coworker I thought was cool and that if I wasn't with him, my ex-husband, I would have been with this other guy, which was, don't ever say that to your mate. So he told our pastor that, and the pastor said, well, maybe you should go live with your parents for a while to get some fresh air or something. And that basically is what caused our divorce. That's the danger, honestly, of getting involved in churches. And since then, I've been a little bit squeamish about getting involved in churches because just one word from one pastor, just like, I mean, that wasn't like the only thing, but that was... A big contributing factor to my divorce anyways yeah watch out who your friends are watch out what they say watch out what you watch out with about what you let them say you know I don't know why but it seems like everybody around a couple wants to break them up I have experienced that so many times it's ridiculous I guess just because everybody is jealous you know, like, if you guys have a lot of love and then all those other people don't have love, they're jealous, so then they want to break you up so you can be miserable like them, I guess. Anyways, so then we divorced, and then, ironically, I kept going to that church for quite a while. And then COVID happened, so all the churches shut down. So then my blog was my church, and Twitter, Twitter has been my church. Why? I don't know, because I follow a lot of really cool pastors on there, like Greg Glory and Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, Stephen Furtick, uh, Paula White. And, I, and most people that I follow post Bible verses, so it feels like church. So that's really cool. So Twitter's been my church basically for five years. Do I miss going to church in person? I don't know. The last church service I went to in person, it was a Pentecostal church not too far from my, where I'm living. And this guy was literally running up and down the aisles. And I was just like, why? <laughs> why do people do stuff like that in church? Why are they going to make it all weird? You know? Anyways. And that was like two years ago. So. Yeah. There you go. I fully believe in online church. I think that's great. Because, I don't know, it's just a lot easier. I've always felt like when you go to church in person, honestly, most people don't talk to anybody else. Like, you just go, you watch the sermon, you leave, you don't talk to anybody. So what's the point? You might as well just watch it online. But if you really want to, like, have fellowship, it's good to sign up for Bible studies. I've done a lot of different Bible studies, women's Bible studies, um, small groups. So I highly recommend that if you really want to, like, get to know other Christians. Just going on Sunday, you're probably not really going to... Unless you really are super outgoing and you just like talking to random people. Which you totally can do. <laughs> if you want to. You know, it's not like anybody's going to be like, don't talk to me. Like, people are going there because they want to talk to someone, usually. So, anyways. But if you really want to have Christian fellowship, you should get in... Uh, some kind of a small group, Bible study, something, you know. 
Oh, I was also doing something for a while, community Bible study, where it was like women from all different churches, and we would meet one morning a week, and you had homework five days a week, like intensive homework, like with a lot of questions that you had to write down your answers to, and read a lot of the Bible, and that was really good. I did that two different times. I did one where my mom led the group, and that was cool. Anyways... Small groups are great, and I hope you all will find a small group that you like, because it's, you really, yeah, you really learn a lot, and it's nice to, like, connect. You can connect more with other Christians in a small group than you can on the Sunday morning churches, on the services, so all y'all should do that for sure. Woot. Oh, and if you're married, yeah, I recommend, like, marriage small groups. Those can be really good. Like, I did one with my ex-husband, and it was pretty cool. Like, it's you and your mate and then a bunch of other couples. So, those can be cool. Anyways, uh, God bless y'all. God bless. Bye.